Hello, hello. I hope everyone is doing well, whether you're still in a sort of lockdown or if your state's letting you run free. Our state has lifted guidelines, sort of, so people can go out. Um, we, however, have chosen to stay home just for a little while and see how the reopening plays out. So it has provided me with a ton of free time to try a bunch of pencils. I kind of warned you in my last review that I have gone pencil shopping crazy, I guess you could say, and been ordering almost all the pencils on my wish list. One of them that I've kind of been tracking, and on, I'll be honest, I wasn't going to order, were the Castle Art Premium Soft Touch ones. They have great reviews on Amazon, both in their 72 and this 120 set. Uh, there's fewer reviews on the 120, just because it's a lot newer, but the 72 set had great reviews, almost to five stars. Um, you know, and then of course there were some negative ones, so I decided I would try them out. I looked at the pricing and I was pretty shocked. <laughs> so. That's another reason I uh, took the plunge because I saw how cheap they were. So this 120 set was only $47.99. So really cheap considering 120 pencils. They are wax based and we'll get into kind of the quality of the pencils more. But I just wanted to kind of walk you through how they arrived and all that stuff. So they didn't come in a protective box. Instead, the tin and a um, shrink wrap plastic was all that these came in. So that was kind of a flag, you know, because the more expensive ones either have a box or bubble wrap. Like, you can tell they're protected, whereas this was just kind of like, here you go. So, um, I mean, my tin showed up dented, as you can see here. And then... It is a pretty cheap, flimsy tin, I won't lie to you, but we'll get into that in a sec. So when you open it, you have two pamphlets. Uh, this first one, Castle Arts has a universal color system. So depending on whether you do their paints, their pencils, even their gel pens, they all have part of this universal system. So they do include the pamphlet showing you everything that falls into that universal color coding system, including their gel pens here, which I do own, not too shabby. And then if you open this, let's see if I can zoom out just a tiny bit. There we go, so you can see the whole thing. So here you'll have their color chart, and then it even tells you which mediums come in these colors. So their colored pencils are the circle, watercolor pencils are the square, and so you'll see there are some that are exclusive to the colored pencils like this Naples Yellow Light, this Naples Yellow, Rose Pink, so a lot of these you will only get in colored pencils. But um, while this is handy, it's still not a good substitute for swatching them yourself because they aren't going to actually look like this on paper. But it's a good starting point. And then, you know, if you ever want to say you really liked, you know, this Heather Purple and you want to try it in watercolor pencils, they actually have it in that. Or you wanted to, you know, try some of their paint pens, you can actually get this leaf green here in your colored pencil in a watercolor and in their paint pens so that was pretty nifty but that comes with this set and then of course they tell you all the products and then they kind of give you a rundown of the benefits of each kind and I just keep that in my tin and then they have this little booklet about you know using colored pencils and it's all right <laughs> it's not really gonna do too much but it's there in case you want some basics. And then on top of everything is this little layer of foam. And without this, the pencils would smack against the lid of the tin. But luckily, 
they uh, did include the foam, so the pencils weren't moving around when they arrived. They were all still in their slots, so that was a good sign. I, I always say if you can hear movement, you know, if you hear things clanking around, then it's not good packaging. You don't hear anything shifting. So that is a good sign there. They cared enough to make sure your pencils weren't just flying about because we all know how things are treated in shipping. <coughs> Excuse me. So below here is all of your pencils. Now I've already rearranged these to match the colors on the lid here. So when you when they arrive, they're not in these colors at all, or this order of colors. Um, at first, I thought maybe it was because they had a 72 set, and then they added on the extras to create the 120. And there were some people who theorized that's the order they were in. And in a way, it seemed that way. But then I looked at what was in the previous 72 set, and compared it to the really random order mine were in, and it still didn't line up. So um, that's kind of a mystery to me. And I, but I mean, every single color was here. They were just very random. I mean, I had things all over the place, and it wasn't too bad though because they had all of them laid out for me perfectly here. So I just had to find them and put them back in order, and then. One thing I love about when they already have it pre-printed on that lid is it makes it easier to just start filling out your swatch chart and then you're almost ready to go. So the pencils come, let's find one that I didn't mess around with too much. So they come with kind of a blunt edge here and uh, they're all kind of tucked into this case and the easiest way to get them out is to you know, push up here gently of course and then pop it out but you know overall they're they have the black paint and then the color dipped end this end doesn't match obviously the actual color so just keep that in mind and then they do have the you know the name of the color and the corresponding number so that's pretty handy and most of their names are pretty basic so you have some that match up with uh, Faber-Castell color names and Prismacolor color names, but their variety of color is not the same. So like their burnt ochre or brown ochre doesn't really match with what you get from Prismacolor or same thing with like their terracotta and you know ultramarine. They're all very different. So brands, just keep in mind, all brands will have similar names for their colors, but that doesn't necessarily mean the pigment is going to be the same. So just always keep that in mind. Now let's talk packaging. I really love to keep my pencils in the tin they come in, especially if, you know, like I can put the foam here, I can store it on its side, and these aren't going to shift. Unfortunately, this is really cheaply made. Um, when I had first opened it, the hinge popped right off, <laughs> so I had to snap it back in place. And then these plastic trays are ridiculously cheap. I mean, you can barely grip here, and then it starts to bow on you. <laughs> so I basically just get it, wiggle it, and then kind of carefully reach under. But, I mean, see how flimsy this is? All it takes is an extra cup of coffee for me and this whole thing's gonna go flying around. So, um, I would normally put these into a case, but I probably won't use them as frequently as my other brands. So I still will store them in here, but if you plan to use these a lot, definitely get a case. These are going to be a pain to work with outside of it. But you do get three layers. So the first layer, now that they're organized properly, you know, you have your yellows into a couple of your skin tones here. They do have a really good variety of skin tones. Orange, red, uh, your purples and pinks. And I'll show you in a minute. They have a ridiculous number of purples and pinks. I love it. Love it. 
because I always feel like I get shorted on you know a variety of pink colors and they definitely did well on that same with their blues and see the second tray look at all those blues and I'll show you my swatch chart so you can see just how pretty they are and then your third tray of course organized by me kind of goes through your teal jade colors and then you get into your browns and your grays and it does come with a black and it comes with a white so that's always good let me try to get these in here without accidentally snapping anything Oop. maybe like I said very flimsy be extra careful but so what I did is I ended up swatching them using the order that was on the lid there's that okay so here we have the 120 swatched out if you're curious um, this swatch chart is from coloring bliss you do need to sign up for her free membership so this printable is totally free you just have to sign up and she has these cute little 150 blank ones so I printed one out to use for this but as you can see these colors are very bright I mean that I mean, look at how vibrant they are the only problem here is while they're super bright they don't have anything soft for more realistic work but I mean if you're doing something in a uh, world of flowers look at all of these pinks and purples to play with I mean it's ridiculous and then even then the green varieties are really good and the the names are you know easy to follow and they're not anything too crazy but they do have a lot of instances where they do like a light regular and deep for example um, lavender light lavender we have a purple lake purple lake deep and let's see where's one where they have an all three of course when I'm looking for one I can't find it but oh here we go so they have a castle green light castle green and a castle green deep so they do have a lot of instances where they have the regular light and deep ones same thing with like Bengal rose you know they have the light the regular the deep so you will notice that when you're swatching them out <clears throat> they didn't really have anything cute or unique with their names in fact all these names are either the you know the light and deep or their names that you're super familiar with from other big brands you know so like they didn't have like with Arteza or the um, Shapira Farben pencils they had some cute creative names they went super basic and I guess just kept it easy which isn't a bad thing to be honest but if I had a complaint I love that they give you tons of yellows and oranges because um, those ones are perfect when you're wanting to do a gradient but complaint wise for colors you'll notice there's not a light blue like think of the cloud and sky blues from Prisma colors you know they're very pale they don't have anything very pale here even with the you know the pinks this is their lightest one and you know I would have liked to see, especially because they have 120 pencils, some pale colors would have been awesome, especially in the blues. I just feel like that was lacking. Same thing with, there wasn't a super pale green that I could play around with. And then the other problem is you have six grays and that's it, folks. So. With 120 pencils, they probably could have cut out just a few and maybe supplied some more grays or added just those lighter tints, the, those pastel, almost very pale colors. So that is one thing to keep in mind. You're not going to have that, but you could always supplement from another set. Um, these won't blend very well the same with a Prisma color. They are wax based, which is good, 
but they're not as creamy as a Prismacolor. <clears throat> and their coverage, I mean, you do still get a lot of tooth from the paper. So I, I couldn't say with certainty that you could take a cloud blue and try and mix it with these and it would work out well, just because these are a little bit harder and dusty. Um, but still, considering the price, I mean, barely 50 bucks for 120 of these, it, it was good. But before we get into, you know, the usual, like how do they layer and all that, I wanted to talk about the pencil construction. <clears throat> so the core is, like I said, it's wax based, but I did notice, I mean, the wood on these is very cheap and a lot of them have cracks already. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but where's the one? A few of them have very deep cracks in the wood already. Like you can actually see the core under that crack. So that was a concern. The, they're very lightweight, but it's because it is a cheap wood. And I mean, of course, you can't expect them to, you know, dive in and build these as hardy as like a Faber-Castell pencil, you know. You pick up one of those and they're heavy. They feel thick and heavy. These are featherly light. Um, they do have the dipped end though, which is always nice because with, like with a Prismacolor, your end can actually come out. Whereas with these, it's closed off. So they do have that. But I do know, based on the wood, I mean, my sharpener was already starting to get a little dull. And you can see already here some effects of that. And if you have a sharpener that is on its last limb, these are definitely going to splinter on you. <clears throat> and it, I would say you'll probably get a lot of cracks. But that, I mean, comes with a cheaper price tag. The cores, however, when I was lifting them up and examining all of them, they are centered, always a positive, because to be quite honest, I pay almost 2.5 times more for a Prismacolor and I still get cores that are off center. So when you sharpen, you'll get some extra wood hanging out up here. So that is something to keep in mind. They, they were all centered. I could not find the millimeter. <clears throat> Nowhere on their site, the packaging, Amazon, anywhere, could I find it. I did send an email to the manufacturer, so if they do get back to me, I'll just update in the description. Um, it is pretty thick though, so it's definitely got to be over 3.8 if I had to guess, but unless any of you happen to know or you've asked the manufacturer and they've gotten back to you, let me know. I'm very curious, just for comparison purposes. <clears throat> but, I mean, it is still a thick core, especially compared to, you know, the base of it. So just keep in mind, the core is still pretty good, but you do have a very cheap wooden base so always have a super sharp um like blade on your sharpener if you're going to be sharpening these frequently so let's get into a few things here and get off that off to the side <clears throat> all right let me zoom in just a tiny bit maybe okay so I used for this color magenta 086 and I wanted to try out a few different layers and see the coverage you know I'm a I'm more of the heavy-handed colorist I that's why I love Prisma colors I can just press really hard and smush it all together you can't necessarily do that with these but you can a little bit um, they're just not as buttery I don't know how else to say it <clears throat> but you know with one layer this is the coverage here now two layers gets a little better three layers is where you start to get a lot more filled in four is great you just have some of the tooth five is pretty good coverage but there's still some tooth in there so that's just something to keep in mind even with five layers I could have 
probably tossed in six or seven. I think seven would have been the golden just by watching it progress, but that's also a good thing because if you're the type that likes to do a lot of light layers, you will have plenty and it does take really well. So that's a good thing and it's not burnished at all. So that is a positive in a way. I'm an impatient colorist and you'll never catch me layering. <laughs> I avoid layering. I'm more start heavy, fade it out, and then come back in heavy with another color. So for me, this these would cramp my hands just ever so slightly. <clears throat> but I also wanted to show you with the pressure. So here we have the light pressure and then medium pressure gives you really good coverage, you know, um, especially if you were trying to go from heavy to light and then you were going to go over this light with another color. And the heavy pressure, like I said, my, my preferred style is great coverage. There's almost no tooth coming through, but I did have to press really hard. But to their credit, the lead did not break. I had a sharp point and it held, so that is something to consider because a sharp point with a Prismacolor would have broke and crumbled and dusted all over. <laughs> so you, they hold a great point and they cover well and smooth. So that's that was good. Now, <clears throat> when you are doing a heavy pressure, these are a lot dustier than Prismacolors. And there's a few pencils that are scratchy. In fact, when I was filling out my color chart, the ones where there's extra tooth showing, this was because they were getting super dusty and scratchy. I would have to slightly twist the pencil to find a non-scratchy angle. And even with extra sharpening, <clears throat> I couldn't get some of them. I just kept scratching my page. So again, you, you do get what you pay for here. So just keep that in mind. But overall for smudging, like I said, they do have a lot of dust. So if you are coloring with these, you really want to, you know, use an artist brush and just gently brush it away. Don't use your hand because it is a wax base, so it's still going to take the warmth and smudge. But these do not smudge anywhere near as bad as a Prismacolor. And I believe that's because they're just a, a little bit harder than the Prismacolors. So that's why you're not getting this, because if I used a similar color, <clears throat> this heavy-handed with a Prismacolor, I could smudge and you would see a perfect smudge line, whereas with this one, the smudge is just, you know, barely there. And this is me pressing hard, too. So they are great for, you know, especially left-handed colorists who always end up, you know, overlapping or if you're like me, you kind of just want to be lazy and rest your hand on your page, but they're not as smudgy as Prismacolors, so that was good. Now for erasing, I've got my trusty no-name eraser <laughs> that I love to use. We're going to test it out. And again, these were put down with pretty heavy pressure just because this is my coloring style and I wanted to see how well it would erase using mine, like my preferred coloring style. <clears throat> so as you can see, it does erase pretty well considering it's a wax based and you do have a tiny bit there, but this will be easy enough to color, or, uh, color over and you don't have to worry about it. So now, the pricing. I did mention that it was $47.99 for the 120 set, but if you wanted to start smaller, you can actually on Amazon get a 72 count that comes with a case for $37.99. You can also get the 72 count in a tin for the same price. So like I said, their tins are cheap, the trays are flimsy. Your best deal is to get this 
with the case. I mean, it's a free case, and <clears throat> I'm sure it's not made of, you know, superior quality, but I bet it's way better than their flimsy tin and stuff, so keep that in mind. But then, if you go to the Castle Arts actual website, you can get your 120 count for $39.99, and the 72 count with or without the case is also only $29.99, but the catch is you only get free shipping if you order more than $50. And as you can see, this is under 50, so you would have to toss something else in the cart for shipping because <clears throat> I priced it out, at least for where I'm shipping to. When I put in the $39.99 after, you know, the tax, I obviously didn't qualify for free shipping. And so my shipping actually brought me close enough to Amazon's and their shipping takes several business days. Whereas Amazon, if you have Prime, right now their two business day rule isn't working because of the, you know, delays and shipments and such, but I still got mine in like four days. So that's just something to consider. You would have to buy more than the pencils, especially if you did the $29.99 one. But they do have other things, you know, you could buy their set of gel pens or, you know, something else you want to try. So those are your two best options. Now the biggest thing, <clears throat> these are not open stock. So if you run out of a pencil color, you might luck out and the color you need is in this 72 set. If not, you will have to repurchase the 120 set. There are some other cheaper pencil brands that might be comparable. Um, I've seen a few on Amazon, but I personally haven't tested them, but I have seen people say they're comparable and you can swap them out. I'm not going to testify to that because I haven't personally tried it myself. But that is one issue with these cheaper brands that don't have open stock because, you know, for example, <clears throat> these turquoise colors here, I would love to use, and I did use on a picture that I'll show you in a minute. I would blow through these things super quick. And no matter what, if by some luck they're in the 72 count set I'm still going to pay close to 40 bucks here or 30 bucks and shipping here so you buy Prismacolors and at Hobby Lobby I can get you know my pencils open stock for not even two bucks there's websites online that you can also buy Prismacolors open stock so that is one thing to keep in mind. In the long run, you're gonna pay more to replace your colors. But if you're okay just picking up a whole new set, <clears throat> then by all means do it. I actually do that with my Prisma colors. I wait for them to go down to 80 something for the 150 count on Amazon. And that's when I snatch up the whole thing because I use my Prisma colors so much and every single color except the three neons. I don't use those, <laughs> I give those to my daughter. But every single color in that kit I use, so I just buy the full box. Um, but yeah, if you're just, you know, say you do a ton of nature, you're gonna run through all these greens and you might not find all of those, well, I know you won't find all of these in the 72 count. So you will be forced to spend $47.99 or 40 bucks in shipping to get those colors back. So definitely just keep that in mind. You know, great price, but without open stock, eh, it's kind of iffy. And I don't know if they'll ever offer an open stock because Castle Arts isn't like the other big artist brands. So I just like to put that disclaimer out there because that's one drawback to these budget pencils. All right, so we've talked about the colors, we've talked about their performance, but I think the best test is seeing how they did in an actual book. So this paper here is a lot toothier. So, you know, the coverage, like I said, on this toothy paper, you still have some of it showing through, but on a real coloring book, these pages, at least for this one, for example, 
are super smooth. So here is a picture I did using the Castle Arts. And one thing I did notice is on this smoother paper, they blended really well. I did get, you know, a few where I needed to go back and kind of layer over a few times, but nothing too bad. They took me longer than a Prismacolor would. And then they blended really well. I used the teals for all these leaves here. I used a set of three purples for all the purple here. <clears throat> and then the pinks, I, I picked out three pinks and kind of just played around with them. But one thing I did notice is on this paper, the vibrancy is almost muted. You know, because when you look at the color swatch chart, I mean, they just go, wow, super bright. And then you put them down here and it's like, eh, okay. But I did not use a blender pencil. So you can blend them just using the colors themselves, which is awesome because blender pencils, I'm not a fan of. I didn't use any mineral spirits or anything. So they do still come together very smooth. And I'm still happy with this, but if I were to compare it to my more expensive pencils, this one did start to cramp my hand because like I said, I'd have to go back and do extra pressure or it just, this is a pencil where you're going to have to layer a lot more than you normally would. And if your coloring style is like mine, where you wanna just press hard, fade out, overlap with the next color, these are going to hurt your hand if you try to do it that way. You can do it that way, but it will cramp your hand up. But overall, it still turned out great. I don't know how often I would use them just because I, I prefer my Prismacolors and a few other brands I have. But I mean, still, if you are new to coloring, I would suggest trying them out. Just please keep in mind, they are not your artist grade wax-based pencil. They are not going to perform anywhere near the Prismacolor Premieres or even Derwent Color Soft. And, uh, you know, they won't be anything like a Luminance pencil. So just don't, if you do own those more expensive sets, don't compare them to that because that's, it's just not the same. It's totally apple and oranges type of deal here. But for a budget pencil, you know, that's wax based, these are great and they're, still good quality that you could play around with. And I've seen people make beautiful pictures using these pencils. I mean, I've seen people make amazing things using Crayola. So you don't always have to spend a fortune. And <clears throat> on these smoother pages, they still do great. You know, and if you're, if you don't have Magical Jungle or you're like me and you need to own multiple copies of the same book, this is like $3.95 on Amazon right now because <laughs> this is one of her older books. I just happened to look because I was finding the link for you guys for the description below and I saw the price and my jaw dropped. You do have to pay like three something in shipping so it comes out to six bucks but I bought this thing for way more than that and if I didn't already have two other versions I'd buy another one but I think buying more I just can't justify but still, so if you're looking for Magical Jungle, you can pick that up super cheap right now. And I don't know how long that'll be uh, till they run out. And I'm not even sure they're still printing these ones, to be honest. But you could pick it up, you know, grab this book for under 10 bucks and grab your set of pencils for under 50 bucks and go to town. But overall, I was pretty impressed. Like I said, it has some great pros and cons, you know, like the cons would just be the the wood is cheaper quality. You're not going to have that easy sharpening experience unless you have a very sharp sharpener. The moment it gets dull, I guarantee these things are going to crack on you. They, uh, you know, shouldn't be stored in this tin if you're going to use them often because you're just going to spill them all over the place. They are dustier, 
there are a few you know with those scratchy points um, just to keep an eye out for but overall they are soft way softer than I expected them to be you know you get you can get a free case with a smaller set they're they hold their point they still blend well and with all the purples and pinks I mean even on the front you can see purple pink blue green even though they're missing some of those colors I was still pretty impressed would I buy them again no but that's just because they don't match my coloring style but I always love to have different varieties of pencils I like to play around with them and who knows I might start messing around with these again and end up finding a new way and loving them even more but I don't regret regret purchasing them at all so I think you would enjoy them and you know if you have already tried the castle art let me know your thoughts whether it's the 120 or the 72 count set you know let me know if you um, have any favorite color combos I'm going to be sharing all the color combos for this one on Instagram I have already shared a couple if you follow me on Instagram if not the link in the description below you can follow me there I tend to share you know my works in progress and all my color combos and then you know I'd love to know your color combos so I can play around with this brand a little bit more and then I'd just love to hear your feedback if you use the castle arts and what you think and if you have any extra suggestions for those new to trying a wax base pencil and of course if you're new to the channel please don't forget to subscribe you'll want to hit the little bell so you're notified each time I upload a new video and then of course if this was helpful please hit the like button that helps push it up towards the top so others can see reviews on these products and I'm hoping to do a color along soon I might even use these pencils in a color along after I get a better grip on them but for now I have gone pencil shopping crazy so I have tons of pencil reviews coming your way just as I had promised in my last uh, review so just be prepared for that but until then keep coloring